All right, well, so I want to say welcome to everybody. My name is Mrs. Fudge, and this is your first introduction to the Flip class Classroom. It's going to be your first video that you're going to watch. Okay, so um, as such, I wanted to kind of give you um, a little bit of information that you might find helpful. Okay, we're going to do notes. This is going to be our first notes. Now, I don't know, you might want to take notes in a spiral. If you do, stop the video right now, go find a spiral. Okay, um, you might be one that um, wants to take notes on your own loose leaf paper because you want to use a binder, which I think is a good idea. Here's why. I do end up providing a lot of worksheets and handouts. And so if you're going to try and keep things in chronological order, it might be good just to have loose leaf paper for your notes because there's going to be times when I hand out worksheets and you can just kind of fit them in where they just naturally belong, chronologically speaking. Okay, but I'm not opposed to using a spiral for your notes. That's fine, too. It's up to you. In either case, you just need to uh, stop the video if you need to right now and go locate something to um, take notes on. All right. All right, the title of these notes are going to be um, Zero in a Fraction. Okay, as I, I do try and write as neat as I can, however, I'm limited with this um, pen, so just work with me, but I want you to practice um, good um, writing and uh, make sure that you're nice, neat, and organized, and I'll do the best I can uh, based on this stylus and, and what I'm working with, so just work with me. All right, notes zero in a fraction. Uh, it might be helpful for you to put the date on the notes over here, because sometimes when we want to reference um, notes, I might say to you, well, we did that back in October, and you can... Uh, flip back through pretty quickly and find the notes that we're looking for. So again, put the date over here. All right, zero in a fraction. That's the title of the notes. Before I start looking at the different cases of, of how we might encounter a zero in a fraction, um, let's start with some background. Okay, and you can write this down. I want you to cons consider the fraction eight divided by four. Okay, well, we all know that eight divided by four is equal to two. Okay, I'm starting with some easy problems so we can make connections to. Yeah, so what? 8 divided by 4 is 2. There's not a 0 in that fraction. Uh, Y'all be patient with me. I'm building. This is going somewhere. All right, so what does this mean? Well, 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. It means that we can take the denominator, 4, okay, just check our work, and we can multiply it by, I'm just going to put a box here, okay, with a question mark and get an answer of 8, the numerator. 4 times box equals 8. Well, what is box? Well, we know 4 times 2 is going to have to be what gives us 8. So we're just performing the inverse operation of multiplication. We know this is 2. I'm going somewhere. Okay, and that gives us 8. So that's just a way to check. So let's do another one. 12 divided by 3. I know there's not a 0 anywhere in this fraction, but just work with me. 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So what does that tell us? Okay, for this division problem, we can check our work by um, multiplication. So 3 times, well, it has to be that 3 times 4, this box right here, okay, has to be equal to the numerator. 3 times 4 would be 12. This would have to be 4. Okay. All right, so we're ready to now look at our first case of 0 in a fraction, and then I'm going to connect back to this in just a second. So I'm just going to say Roman numeral number 1. Okay, consider the case where zero is in the numerator. Okay, and your denominator is a number, that's what that symbol stands for, a number not zero. It can be anything you want it to be. Anything, positive, negative, fractions, decimals, as long as the denominator is not zero. All right, so what is zero divided by not zero? Okay, well, let's look at some cases of that. So this is kind of like our heading here. Well, zero divided by five. I'm just going to pick on the denominator to be 5. Okay, well, hopefully you guys know that 0 divided by 5 is just 0. Okay, if 0 is on top, the answer is 0. This is part to whole. How do you choose to take 0 from 5 objects? 0 from 5. Well, there's 0 ways to do that, so that answer is 0. All right, now what does this imply? That's what this symbol means right here, this error. Error arrow means it implies. Okay, well, it implies that, kind of think about what we did up here, that 5, the denominator, times some box, whatever. Okay, we don't know what that is. Okay, 5 times what number has to be the numerator? Because that's what we saw up here. Well, the numerator is 0. 
well, what's the only thing I can put in this box so that when I multiply by five, this denominator or whatever it is, okay, when I multiply, I get an answer of zero. Well, the only thing I can put there is zero. All right, let's look at another case. I'm just going to do another example over here. What about zero divided by negative eight? Zero divided by negative eight is going to be zero. When the zero is on top and not on bottom, the answer is just zero. Check your work. Okay, we know negative eight times the box okay, has to give us zero. If this is a true division statement, then checking it by multiplication, the inverse operation, okay, should result in us getting the numerator of zero. The only number I can put in this box that's going to give me an answer of zero for the numerator is zero. All right, so that's case one. Let's look at case two. Okay, well, let's consider a fraction where we have zero in the denominator, but this is a number, not zero on top. And let's look at a couple of examples of that. All right, first example is going to be three. It's not zero, and it's divided by zero. This is part to whole. How can you choose to take three, three pieces, three sub pieces, whatever, from zero total? Part to whole. Well, I can't. There's no way I can choose to take three from nothing. All right, so what does this equal? Well, we've learned that this is equal to undefined. And graphically, it means that there's a vertical asymptote, if you think about that. This is not a vertical asymptote. This is just zero. But if you have a fraction like this, if you're talking about a graph, then three over zero would represent um, a vertical asymptote on that graph. Okay, that's equal undefined. Well, let's kind of go back to what we did to start the notes. What does this imply? Well, zero times, okay, we're going to put a box here. Zero times what is going to equal three? The numerator. It's my question mark. What can I multiply zero by to get an answer of three? Well, nothing. There's no way I can take a zero, which is a factor, and multiply it by something and get three. This is undefined. Okay, and just so you know, another way we might say that, okay, is going to be does not exist. Okay, there's not a number that exists that I can multiply by zero and get three. So sometimes I use does not exist as opposed to undefined. It's never going to happen. Okay, this situation will never occur. All right, let's look at a second example. All right, what if I had negative five divided by zero? Well, we've we've come to know and understand that as undefined. And now we know that we can also use does not exist. Okay. If this is um, our, our problem here, remember what we can do from the very beginning of the notes. We can take zero and multiply it by something that belongs in this box. Okay. And that has to give us negative five. Well, there's no way I can come up with the number for that box. So we say it's undefined or does not exist. So what should you take from this? If you have zero on top and not on bottom, the answer is just zero. You're done. If you have a fraction with zero in the denominator, not in the numerator, the answer is undefined, but from now on we might call it does not exist. There's a third case of zero in a fraction. What if you have the case where zero is both in the numerator and the denominator? Okay, well what we say for this is, we don't say it's zero, we don't say it's undefined. It's called indeterminate. So zero over zero is called indeterminate. Sometimes we just abbreviate it as IND. It's indeterminate. Well, why? Well, remember, this implies, that's what that arrow means, that you can take the denominator of zero, you can multiply it by something that belongs in the box here, okay, and that's supposed to equal zero in the numerator. Okay, well, let's, let's think about what could go in this box. Look at this statement. Zero times seven is zero. Zero times six is zero. Zero times any number is going to be zero. So we put here any number. Well, if you think about that, okay, for any number right here, that's indeterminate. It could be anything. So we call this form zero of zero the indeterminate form.
Now, our work with this fraction 0 over 0, okay, what we're going to do in calculus with 0 over 0, well, it depends upon the context. If we're working with limits, we handle indeterminate one way. If we work with functional values, it might be that we work with, um, you know, with 0 over 0 in another way. So it really just depends upon context. But what I want you to take away from this video, and especially 0 over 0, is that when we see that form, 0 over 0, we call it indeterminate. Okay, and then how we proceed will be determined by, by about the context that we're working in. Okay, so coming back up here, I do also want to say something about any number. Okay, if you think about it for a minute, zero times even, and I'm going to put right here, or okay, I'm going to put does not exist. Even if I took zero and multiplied it by an expression such as does not exist, I'm going to get zero as an answer. Because zero times anything, no matter what it is, or it does not exist, is going to equal zero. So coming down here, just want you to add contextually. Okay, typically what we're going to see. Okay, if we're working with functional values, finding y values. If we work with functional values, finding y values when we know x's, okay? If someone asks us to find a functional value and we input an x value and we end up with a fraction and we end up with 0 over 0, we would say that that functional value does not exist. Okay? So in the context of functional values, if we end up with 0 over 0, we're going to say d and e. Now, if we are working in the context of limits, and we end up with 0 over 0. Okay, I'm not going to say every time, but oftentimes we end up with a number as our answer, whatever number that may be. So we're going to be handling 0 over 0, the indeterminate form, um, in two different ways depending upon the context that we're working in. So that's it. That's it for your first video. Don't forget to answer the, uh, the questions in the WSQ that's going to follow the tutorial.